preposterousness in the court. The prosecutor said that there is an assertion that Seawall Ferry sailed zigzag before the accident, resulting in large movements of cargoes and asked the professional's counseling manager from the Joint Prosecutor Police Investigation Headquarters to make an opinion on such assertion. The manager answered, he understood AIS as a track only but he did not know the meanings of current position of a ship, the center of gravity, and sailing direction. Preposterous. Director Kim made the assertion based on latitude and longitude values, HDG, and AIS. Probably, the manager did not watch our program. A sailor said in the broadcasting that Seawall Ferry had sailed zigzag with various kinds of problems. When the sailor said that early in this issue, we did not know what such zigzag sail meant. The manager's answer is really preposterous. Based on the support by a professional, I showed the directions of tides in the time zone, as shown. The crew said there was little wind on that day. The professional said that vector value should be added considering the directions. I applied the most conservative method. In order to avoid possible further arguments, I applied possible largest tidal velocities and possible lowest vessel speeds. As the result, the obtained angle deviation was only 1.5 degree. As shown, the deviation is only 1.5 to 1.6 degree. However, the differences between HDG and COG shown in the graphs are larger than 5 degrees. And then, they have to answer to these large differences. They said that Seawall Ferry might have a trouble with her gyro compass for 2 to 3 seconds in the accident section, that is the sharp turn section at the top in this picture. And then, before the accident, why such large differences appear between HDG and COG? Chapter 2 Cruel History of Government's AIS Lost Section The government has said that no data was available for a section. However, the reasons for such unavailability have been continuously changed. I'd like to say about the reasons they have been saying until now. The first report made by the MOF was that the data was unavailable for 3 minutes and 36 seconds. Their second report was that the data is available for 3 minutes but is still unavailable for 36 seconds, that is the rectangular section in the picture. The Coast Guard made an explanatory report on April 21. This report is very important because the data for the data loss section was disclosed for the first time and the time was recorded with a mistake resulting in disclosure of position data. According to Jindo VTS data reported by the Coast Guard, the time was 08 but, when the position was applied, the time was found to be 08 indicating possible modification of Jindo VTS data. As said before, Director Kim found the data for 084905 and such data showed a large left turn by 25 degrees as shown, especially, in advance. Several days later, YTN reported that the information on an 8-second section was found in the backside of the 36-second data loss section. YTN reported that, Based on the record of VDR of Duo family that was sailing near Seawall Ferry, the data for the time between 49.05 and 49.13 was restored. According to YTN, Seawall Ferry sailed to 140 degrees for 8 seconds and then turned 10 degrees for a second at 08.49.13. The report of YTN was highly sensational at that time. However, when Director Kim applied the position of Seawall Ferry at 084905 reported by YTN to the data reported by the MOF, the position was not for the time of 4905 but was for the time of 4844. And then, the MOF made the third report. The MOF said that the information on Seawall Ferry at 084905 was maintained for 8 seconds and then was renewed at 084913. As the result, 
The data for 4905 reported by the Coast Guard, which indicated strong evidence of right turn after left turn, became meaningless and disappeared. Since the third report by the MOF, nobody needed to pay attention in the very section where as large as 10 degrees of large turn was made for a second. Nevertheless, the MOF made no explanation about cancellation of the data for the time of 4905. However, if the AIS information for the time of 4905 was recorded in the Coast Guard Jindo VTS, Du family had to receive the same information. In fact, as the government said that the data for 8 seconds including the time of 4905 was restored, the government must look at the data for the time of 4905 but cancelled the data for the 8 seconds including the time of 4905. The MOF made the fourth report. The MOF increased the data lost section from 29 seconds to 35 seconds. Mistake or intention? In the court, the counseling team reported that the mate tried to veer the helm from 140 degrees to 145 degrees but Seawall Ferry was not properly veered and they veered the helm by 15 degrees at least resulting in sinking of Seawall Ferry. They said that the direct cause of the accident was immature veering. This is the situation in the court. However, their testimonies require verification. The section between two black horizontal lines is the 35 second data loss section. They asserted that they turned as small as 5 degrees of small angle in 140 degrees of direction. However, there was no veering effect and they veered a large turn. Also, they veered the helm more and more stepwise. And then, she tilted, cargoes fell down, and 10 degrees of angle was added, resulting in sinking of her. When the data reported by the Coast Guard was applied, their assertions became incorrect and were different from the analysis result made by professionals. When this data was inserted and the whole data was reviewed by professionals, their common opinion was that, if Seawall Ferry turned 1.5 degree per second, the crew had to veer the helm in advance. As to say, when the crew veered the helm, 10 seconds of time is required for the hydraulic equipment to turn the rudder and then inertia maintains previous direction for a while. Therefore, the crew must veer the helm by 25 degrees, at least, in around the lower black line. Professionals said that, if the crew veered the helm by 5 degrees in the position of lower black line and weighted veering effect, the ship might already pass through the 35 second section. If the trial is processed in current situation, expected possibilities are that the cause of sinking may be the problem of stability of the ship overload, and mistake of the helmsman. That core crew may be judged with light punishment rather than homicide in favor of the crew. That the trial procedure will be ended in around mid-October and the judgment will be made in around mid-November. And that if the prosecutor does not change the written arraignment, although a special law is established, it may be difficult to reverse previous judgment. Therefore, Reinvestigation is required in relation to the position found by Director Kim, in order to identify why the crew veered the helm by about 25 degrees intentionally.